Hello everyone. Today I'm going to take you through all the steps to build this Rotorite HD1 frame plus the full DJI setup. All right, let's start by going through all the components we've got. First of all, there's Rotorite HD1 frame, the Hype Train Acro 2207 2450KV motors, the Holy Bro Kakute F7 HDV flight controller, the Holy Bro Teco 32 F3 ESC and all the DJI components including the camera, VTX receiver, and the full digital FPV system. Okay, so since my frame did not come with a manual, the first thing I'm going to do is go to the rotoriot.com website. I'm going to go into the frames section here and look for the HD1 frame. And on the HD1 frame page, down here at the bottom, there's a link for the build manual. And this build manual includes uh, a beautiful PDF with uh, more information than you need so it describes how to install their speci a specific flight controller and everything but I'm just interested in how the frame fits together. Okay so now that I've got the manual handy on my computer as a reference I'm going to start building the frame, putting the arms together, screwing everything in, sort of getting it just lightly tested out, make sure I know where all the pieces go and then uh, I always recommend Anytime you have metal screws going into metal nuts on something like this, you put some thread locker on. That'll help keep those screws from uh, loosening themselves up during your flights. And then at this point in the build process, it's time to put the motors on. The motors, since they are metal screws going into a metal base, I also strongly recommend that you put some Loctite on those. They're very prone to wiggling loose. The motors that the screws that came with these motors were just a touch too small. It's what I'm using in this build anyway, but I'd strongly suggest that you get slightly longer motor screws, but don't get them too long because you really don't want them to touch the windings. If the motor screws are long enough to touch the motor windings, you'll create a short and you'll destroy your motor and you'll have to start all over again. Once I've got the motors attached, I try to do a, what I'd call a dry fit stage, where I take all the components, lay them out how I would like them to be on the frame without attaching anything sort of permanently, just setting them in, stacking them up, getting all the washers and spacers that I think would be appropriate and seeing if they work. And once I'm all ready to go, then it's time to start soldering the motors to the flight controller. You can see here that I'm prepping the wires and putting a little solder on the flight controller first. And then once everything's ready, then I finally get to the point of actually soldering each motor wire to the flight or to the ESC, not the flight controller. And just a reminder, if you haven't done this before, it does not matter what order you put the motors wires to the ESC. If the motor uh, wires are connected in the wrong order, the only thing that'll happen is that the motor will spin backwards. And if the motor spins the wrong direction, you usually just go into the BL Heli uh, software and you can reverse the direction of the motors there. Once I've got all four motors connected to the ESC, the next step is to put the flight controller in and the DJI system. Because the flight controller connects to the 4-in-1 ESC with just one ribbon cable, it's super easy. There's no soldering required. And the same thing for the DJI Air unit. It connects to the Kakute flight controller with just one nice cable. Oh, one more bit of soldering here. I've got to put the XT60 power connector onto the ESC so that the battery can power the entire system. I just want to say really quick here that my 4-in-1 ESC and my flight controller are designed to work together so the cable that comes with them just plugs right in and everything's in the right order. But I still suggest that you double check using the manual for both components and make sure that all of the wires that connect the two together are in the right order and are the way you want them to be because if they're not and you plug them in, bad things can happen. Another suggestion I have for any build you might do is to buy a variety pack of spacers and washers and nuts and M3 screws so you've got all kinds of options when it comes to building your stack and spacing things out just the way you want them to be. So once I've got the flight controller attached nice and securely to the top of the stack, it's time to attach the DJI FPV camera to the front with really teeny tiny screws and a little teeny tiny Allen wrench, which uh, I was fortunate enough to have that teeny tiny Allen wrench from other radio controlled systems in the past. Uh, you may not be so fortunate, you might have to buy one of those really tiny things. 
and then here I am trying to attach the antennas to the back of the air unit, which is also kind of tricky. It takes a little bit of time to tuck everything in there nice and neat. And then test fitting the top. And now it's time for the most stressful part of the whole process, and that is to plug in the battery for the first time. And I'm doing it without a smoke stopper. You really should have a smoke stopper for this part. And great, no smoke. All right, we can keep going. Okay, so at this point, if you haven't done so already, you're going to want to go and update the firmware on all the components of the DJI digital FPV system that you have. So to do that, you're going to want to go to DJI's website, go to the FPV part, and click on the downloads, and you'll be taken to this web page here. And you're going to want to download the DJI Assistant for your operating system. For example, I'm on a Mac, so I've downloaded this DJI Assistant uh, version 2 here. And you're going to want to follow the instructions in all the user manuals on how to update the firmware. It's very important that you get the exact same version of the firmware on every piece. So if you've got, like me, the radio, the air unit, and the goggles, you want to make sure they're all updated to the latest firmware so that they work very well together. To do that, you'll have to plug in the USB-C ports on each of those devices to your computer, and using the DJI Assistant, you can update the software. And all of those steps are laid out in the manuals that come with the devices, or you can download the PDF for those over here. So let's say, let's look at the DJI Air Unit Quick Start Guide. We'll open that PDF. I should also mention that you need to activate all of these pieces of hardware as well if you haven't done that. And that's really done the same way with the DJI Assistant. You'll, it'll step you through the activation process and creating a DJI account. And then you're going to want to follow these steps to link the air module with your goggles, link the air module with your radio. And once you have the DJI software up and running, you can tell it to check for updates to your firmware. Okay, so there's the DJI Assistant, and I plugged in the USB-C port to my radio. Turn the radio on, and if you wait just a little bit, DJI Assistant will detect that you've got your radio connected. And so I can click on that, and it's going to go and check what version of the firmware is on the radio, and it's going to check with DJI to see what version is the most recent and because I've already upgraded mine it'll tell me here that I'm at the most current version. If it's not the most current version uh, you'll be able to update it here. Do that for the radio if you have it, do that for the air unit and do that for the goggles and you'll be all set. So once you've got your DJI system all configured and updated and ready to go it's time to plug in your flight controller to the USB port on your computer and fire up beta flight and let's check to see that our motors are all spinning the right direction. So if you don't already have Betaflight Configurator on your computer, you're going to want to go to this GitHub website. You're going to want to go click on Betaflight Configurator, whatever the latest release is. And then you're going to want to go find the version that works for your operating system. You're going to want to download that program and install it and then get it fired up so it talks to your flight controller. Beta Flight Configurator, the latest version. I've got it up and running. I have not yet plugged in my flight controller to the computer, so I'm going to do that now. Plugged in the USB port, got little flashy lights on the flight controller, and if you wait just a moment on my Mac here, it auto detected the USB connection, picked the right port, and I can say connect, and it's going to connect and talk to my flight controller. And to check the motors. I'm going to go down here to the motors section and then you need to plug in a battery to your entire setup so that the motors have power to spin. So I want to stress once again do not do any of this with your props on. I did not show props being installed yet. You shouldn't have any props installed. So for your own safety make sure they are off before you plug in your battery. But now you can plug the battery in, and you can click this, I understand the risks, the propellers are removed, 
and start with motor one and make it spin just a little bit. And I like to use the tip of my finger and just sort of lightly touch. I use the tip of my finger to just lightly touch the bell of the motor so I can feel which direction it's spinning. Make sure it's spinning the direction that this arrow shows for that motor. Now, if that motor is not in this location, which is the case on mine, you need to remap the motors. And I'll try to put a link in the description to other places you can go to learn how to remap your motors. The reason I had to remap my motors is because my ESC is twisted 180 degrees from what it expects to be. So, go through each of your motors, all four of them, and make sure that they are spinning the correct direction. In my case, I have two motors that are spinning the correct direction and two motors that are not spinning the correct direction. So, I need to go fire up a different software called BLHeli32 where I can go and reverse those motor directions. And I'll stick a link to the BLHeli32 software suite down in the description. It's just a matter of going to that website, downloading the software, installing it on your computer, and firing it up. But before you go do that, you're going to want to disconnect from Betaflight. And you'll probably want to unplug the battery and let everything cool down while you go download and get that software. Okay, so at this point I have the BLHeli suite downloaded and installed. I fired it up. I've got a battery plugged in to the system. So the ESC and the flight controller are powered on. The flight controller has the USB port connection to my computer. So I'm going to, this was auto detected to the correct port and I'm going to click on connect and it's going to see that I've got a 4-in-1 ESC. I like to check the check button so it's going to go out and see all four of the ESCs and it'll see that they all are there and set up with the correct software and how they came from the factory so they're good to go. But I know I need to reverse the motor direction of motors number one and number four. So I'm going to uncheck, is what I'm kind of doing down here, motors number two, three, and four. So I'm only working on motor number one. And right up here where it says motor direction, I'm going to change this slider to reversed. And then I'm going to say right setup. And there are ways to copy this to multiple ESCs at a time, but this is the simple way to get it done. Now I'm going to click on motor number four, do the same thing, change it to motor direction reversed, hit right setup, right was okay, and let's just check all four ESCs again. I can see these two are normal, this one is not, and this one is not. Okay, let's go click on this ESC overview tab, and it'll show you the same thing here, that motor direction of ESC number one is reversed, two, three are normal, and ESC number four is also reversed. So we're all set, and if you wanted to, you can also click the motors tab here. It'll reboot your flight controller and allow you to test your motors and your motor directions here, just like you could do in Betaflight. Click I understand, and I can slide these up. And with the tip of my finger, I like to just lightly touch the bell of the motor, verify that they're spinning the right direction. It's not just quite as easy here because it doesn't show you the little diagram of your drone and which motor is where and which direction it should be spinning. So that should do it for the BLHeli suite. We can close this program and we can disconnect the battery from your drone and move on to the next step. So now we're at the final step of the software setup that we need to do to get this drone ready to fly. So I'm going to plug in just the USB port into the flight controller again and give it a couple of seconds so it fires up and it should auto detect the USB port here. I'm going to go click connect and the first thing you should do anytime you have a brand new flight controller is you should go into the CLI and you should type dump all 
and that'll show every setting that your flight controller has in case you ever lose it. And you should also probably do a diff all. And once you've got the output of those, you can click over here in the bottom right corner, save to file. And I strongly suggest that you save all the default settings for your flight controller. So when you make changes, you've always got a way to revert back to them. And every time you uh, do something in the CLI and you click back to another spot, it's going to reboot your flight controller, make sure everything's set. All right, my flight controller has been rebooted. So I'm going to connect again. Now, I've already gone through the process and sort of set up this flight controller, but I'll try to step through it again and give you a little bit of idea of what you might need to change. And this is how I have my Kakute F7 HDV flight controller connected to this system. So over here on the ports tab, don't ever change the USB setup. If you change this, you will no longer be able to connect it to the USB port on your computer and you'll be in trouble. With the, this flight controller, where it's got the cable all pre-configured and ready to go to talk to the DJI system, which is super handy, UART1 is where the information for the on-screen display gets sent back and forth. So I had to check this box right here to say that this is where the MSP data gets sent back to the video system so that it can show the OSD information. The other important thing is what's called UART6 down here. That's where the radio control signal gets sent to the flight controller. Um, I also changed the ESC sensor and put on UART7, but I don't think that's currently displayed anywhere, so that isn't going to matter at all. Next down here on the configuration tab, I believe this stuff was all the defaults. Uh, I updated my gyro frequency to 8K and 8K. Uh, you, unless you know what you're doing, you probably don't need to make that change at all. You can input the name of your craft here if you want. If you were using a different flight controller, that would show up in your on-screen display, but that doesn't really show up anywhere in this system right now. It should default to SBUS, which is what you want to start off with with the DJI system. At some point in the near future, when you upgrade to Betaflight 4.1, you might be able to use the DJI or fast SBUS system for potentially lower latency for your radio signals. But for now, you're going to want to just stick with SBUS. And as long as you have your DJI radio and goggles and everything set up with at least version 1.0, they should have defaulted to the SBUS protocol as well. And I don't believe I changed any of these other settings down here. Oh, I turned on RX set so that uh, my motors will beep as if it was a beeper connected to the flight controller. So anytime I want to set it up to beep, the motors make a beeping sound. Under power and battery, I did not change any of these settings. This is all what the defaults were. Under PID tuning, I had these all at the defaults and I've been working on changing my PIDs a little bit to tune it to the, to the way I like it to feel. And I've adjusted these rates to be the way I like to have my rates are. Uh, but you can leave these rates at the default and it'll fly great. On the receiver tab here, I had to change this. It was at T-A-E-R, and I need it to be A-E-T-R. I think that stands for like aileron, elevator, throttle, roll, something like that, and how those are mapped to the controls. At this point, if you wanted to, you can uh, plug in a battery to the system. You can fire up your radio. And once everything gets all connected, there it goes, you can start moving your radio around and you should be able to see all of this uh, fancy stuff moving around and you can sort of fly the drone down in the right hand corner, make sure that is all correct. If you don't see this all moving, then that means you don't have your radio configured properly and you should double check all of your steps and make sure everything is how it's supposed to be. 
but you definitely have to have the battery plugged in for that to work otherwise the DJI Air unit won't have power and it won't talk to your radio. All right, I'm going to disconnect the battery again. Uh, probably could have left that plugged in and talk about this page too. So this is all the modes and how you have it set up and what button you have set up for arming and if you ever wanted to have other modes like horizon and angle mode that are sort of the auto leveling modes. You can also change some of these settings through the on-screen display that's built into the goggles. You can use your radio to flip through those things and you can actually uh, sort of see how they're set and you can change them anytime you want. Um, I also have a beeper set so that when I have one of the switches in a certain configuration it'll beep which is really great if you uh, if your drone crashes somewhere and you're not exactly sure where it is, you can use the beep sound to locate it much faster. And down here there's also the flip over crash, which some people call turtle mode. When your drone lands and crashes and flips upside down, you can use this to spin the motors backwards and flip yourself right side up. I really caution people to be careful when you use that because if your propellers are stuck or if they're bent or damaged too much, it's not going to work and you may burn up a motor or a ESC if you try too hard to do that. Uh, I've already kind of shown this motors tab a little bit. There should be nothing you need to change here now. This OSD screen for this particular setup, since I'm using the OSD that's sort of built into the DJI system, I there's nothing I can change to the OSD that gets overlaid in the video. There is no Betaflight OSD in this system black box there's nothing you need to change here right now this is where it logs all of the data for the flight controller and you can analyze it and do all kinds of cool things but that is not something that's covered in this video and then down at the bottom again is that CLI I would suggest also once you've finished making all your changes and tweaks to it that you go to the CLI and again you do a diff all and see what differences you have from the default and save that to a file so you can always go back to it later Okay, so there's one more thing we need to do before we can go put the props on and take this for a little test hover outside. And that is testing the failsafe. Failsafe is what happens when your drone, for any reason, loses the signal from your radio. What should it do? It should just drop out of the sky. Since these don't have any kind of GPS or return to home feature, the safest thing for them to do is just as quickly as possible, just drop out of the sky and unfortunately crash into the ground but you don't want them flying off and disappearing or keep flying and hitting something or someone so what we need to do is test what happens when the radio signal gets lost to do that I'm going to first turn on my radio here get that fired up and going and then I'm going to plug in the battery again make sure there's no props on let everything boot up. And, okay, once they're all connected and talking, I'm going to arm the system. You can see the motors are now spinning and give it a little bit of throttle. Everything's good. I'm going to simulate a radio failure by just turning my radio off while the drone is flying. And you can see almost instantly all the motors just stopped. My drone would have dropped out of the sky and crashed into the ground. So in my case, the failsafe is all set, ready to go, and that was the default settings. If for any reason your motors don't instantly stop like that, you're going to have to do some research and try to figure out why didn't they stop and make sure that happens. Otherwise, you may end up with a runaway drone. So, all right, we're all set and ready for the next final steps. All right. Now we're at the final step where we are ready to put the propellers on. But what you may not know is that the propellers come ready to spin two different directions. This one is designed to spin clockwise. This one is designed to spin counterclockwise. You can tell by sort of the angle and the shape. And it's, if you don't immediately know, it's something you'll have to research and do some more looking up and figuring out how it goes. I've done it enough that I can just kind of tell, okay, a prop that looks like this should be on this motor, and a prop that looks like this should be on that motor over there, and this prop should be on this motor, 
and this prop should be on this motor. So with the default spinning direction of the motors and props, this one should be spinning like this, and the air will flow the correct way. This motor should be spinning like this. Uh, the way I kind of remember it is that both motors spin and point in towards the back, and the front ones point in towards the camera at the front. And so those are all set the right direction. Grab prop nuts, put the nuts on the propeller shaft, and tighten them down. Make sure you tighten them all the way down so that the top of the prop uh, top of the prop shaft comes through the nylock part of these nuts. And these are the nuts that came with this motor. So they are good nylock nuts with the uh, locking mechanism in them. So I'm going to make sure I get those tightened down good and tight. Alright, and now as you can see, I can see threads poking up through the top of the lock nut. That one's on there. Good. Do that to all four of the motors, and then you're ready to bring it outside and do a quick hover test. Here we go. Now it's time to plug in a battery and do a quick hover test in the front yard and make sure it doesn't flip over or freak out. So pick a relatively safe location far away from anything that can get damaged. Ideally something a little bit softer than the pavement of your driveway, but I was reasonably sure that everything was going to go well. So flip the arm switch and lightly push on the throttle and see if it'll take off. And it does. So it didn't freak out. Everything's good. I must have all the props on the right direction. The motors are all spinning the right direction. It's good to go. Doing a little bit of a test flight here back and forth. Give it a little bit more time in the air so that I can land and touch the motors and make sure they don't burn me. If they're really hot and you can't touch the motors, then you know something's wrong and you're going to have to go back, check some settings and do some research to figure out how to fix it. But it's all good, so I'm done. Well, if you followed the entire build process up to this point, you should have a fully functional HD1 frame with some motors and the complete DJI system. And you should be able to get out there and go do your maiden flight. I hope you enjoyed this video and catch you next time. Thank you for watching. One more thing before I go. If you care about the regulations that are affecting our hobby, please consider checking out the FPV Freedom Coalition by heading over to fpvfc.org.